Hey folks, Jordan with the Young Turks, uh, TYT Politics, 545 in the evening on the East Coast. Uh, before we all go to our weekend, I wanted to give you an update, uh, an update as well as a bit of a one year anniversary of a, what I think is a very dubious um, situation. Uh, a year ago on October 27th uh, in North Dakota at uh, Standing Rock, uh, an 1851 tree uh, sweat lodges and uh, pretty much threw them to the ground. Police beat uh, indigenous water protectors as well as other water protectors who were praying. Uh, and then uh, they pretty much tried to arrest anybody, quoting trespassing. Uh, so we all know uh, they did this on the 27th. Uh, elders had bruises. I, I interviewed somebody who broke her arm due to police brutality, uh, this kind of uh, police brutality, and in some cases I would say police terrorism, uh, happened again and again and again in North Dakota for I'd say six to nine months. Um, they were not protecting uh, indigenous water protectors' rights at peaceful demonstration, nor uh, their white allies' rights uh, at peaceful demonstration. Uh, there was a medic and an indigenous woman named Red Fawn Red Fawn Fallis. Um, she was in her 30s. Uh, she was a medic and kind of had a lot of different roles at the camp uh, in addition to other uh, medics. And on that day, she was doing her job. She was uh, trying to help treat people that had been manhandled and brutalized by the police or the oil goons. Um, from multiple people I've interviewed at the time, they, the police, and I guess now we know uh, Tiger Swan, which was the um, Blackwater-esque um, private military contractor that the North Dakota police and the oil company, Dakota Access Pipeline, was enlisting. Uh, they knew who Red Fawn was, and they were targeting uh, leaders of the camp because they wanted to get the leaders of the camp who, whether it be in the medics role, uh, the leaders in prayer, leaders who organized actions, uh, they wanted to get them out of the way, basically. And we saw that in some of the memos that came out uh, from Tiger Swan uh, in their daily intelligence reports. So on that day, one year ago, um, the Red Fawn was tackled. If you watch the video, I've probably watched it at this point 50 times. She was tackled by, um, at any given time, a couple officers. But overall, she had five or six very large North Dakota oil police on top of her, pinning her to the ground. Uh, if you, there are videos on YouTube that kind of show you slow motion where uh, officers had pulled their gun out while tackling her to the ground. Uh, you see in some slow motion videos her arm visible um, on the ground or on an officer's leg or something like that. But there is no video evidence that she fired a gun or fired anything for that matter towards police. Again, she got arrested one year ago today. And on this day, maybe it's a coincidence, but I doubt it. Uh, she was finally, after being on a wait list for a month to be moved from jail to a halfway house, she has been moved to a halfway house today, uh, this morning, uh, from Bismarck, North Dakota, to Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, that information just got out today. So at least she's not in jail. She's in a halfway house. Um, her trial was supposed to be uh, in December. Her lawyers uh, asked for a postponement. So now the trial uh, will be uh, starting in Fargo uh, January 29th of 2018. Uh, I don't understand, oh, and I spoke with her sister today, Red Dawn, who I've interviewed several times. To our knowledge, as journalists, as activists, if you're watching, the attorneys, the prosecution, has not provided evidence of a gun, of DNA, or fingerprints, of Red Fawn Phallus. So she's been sitting in a jail for one year, today moved to a halfway house, with no evidence provided of her fingerprints on a gun, of I, uh, you know, eyewitnesses that could say she fired a gun, nothing. How is it that an indigenous woman has been sitting in a jail for a year when North Dakota's attorneys and police have provided zero evidence 
to merit her being in a jail. You want to try her in a court of law and, and prove your case? That's one thing. But she should be out of jail awaiting trial because they have no evidence. And if they do have evidence, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it. You would think if they had a gun with her fingerprints or anything like that, it would have been produced by now, don't you think? But this poor woman has been sitting in a jail. By the way, I could tell you, I only sat in jail for one night and I didn't have my glasses. It was not pleasant. She didn't have her glasses for the first few months, which is a form of psychological torture. And don't think I'm dramatizing it. They don't give you your glasses so you can't see and it starts to get in your head when you can't see anything. Debbie, you know, laws aren't the same for brown people. Get real. You're right, Debbie. You're right. And by the way, if, if she fired a gun at police, she should be prosecuted. The only problem with that is, where is the evidence of such things? As I've said all along, and I've done many reports on this, she would have to be the female version of Rambo to have been able to fire off shots, one shot at a police officer, while pinned to the ground by multiple officers. There is zero video evidence of that. There has not been a gun produced. Meanwhile, her sister Red Dawn, her, her family have been advocating for her release, have been working tirelessly to get funds. This is, these, these are impoverished people to get funds for more than a public defender to get actual proper legal defense to defend Red Fawn. But she should not be in a halfway house. She should be home with her family until trial. We should also say that the judge who was set to hear the case in Bismarck has requested to hear the case in Fargo. That could be a good thing, and that, or that could be a bad thing. I don't know. I don't know why this judge would want to see the case uh, from Fargo to, uh, excuse me, from Bismarck to Fargo, but that judge has requested this. And share this video, let's get this out there. I mean, people need to, this needs to stay in people's minds that this woman, as far as we could see, there's been no evidence provided of her doing anything. You would think if they had a gun and her fingerprints or anything, that evidence would have been leaked to the media. That evidence would have been out there. Police and attorneys usually don't sit for a year if they have evidence that anyone fired at a police officer. So, I'm a journalist. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to push conspiracy theories, but I will say to the common sense person, looks to us, looks to me, that she was set up by police to make an example. It was the heat of the Standing Rock No Dapple protest. It was late October. Uh, the water protectors were not given an inch. They were still demonstrating and they were not, they were expressing that they were going to do this until they stopped that pipeline. And from what I have seen and heard and talked to at this point, hundreds of people, the police knew who the leaders at that camp were and the uh, Tiger Swan knew who the leaders at that camp were and the police worked with the prosecutor's office on many of these bogus arrests. So we don't, we can't just stand for our uh, black brothers and sisters. Oh, hey, I'm talking like Bernie Sanders. You got to stand for your indigenous brothers and sisters. As far as we know, Red Fawn has not done anything. Her crime is being an indigenous woman and medic who tried to help stop a, cr a toxic crude oil pipeline from going under the longest river in the United States. That is her, that's her crime that we know of. She has been in prison for a year and was released just today to a halfway house. It's insane. That's not justice. That's not a proper legal system. If you can't provide the evidence, then that's on the prosecution, that's on uh, the state and the feds 
who are bringing the case, and she should be released. But the update is she has been released to a halfway house uh, today. She's in Fargo now. Uh, Red, Fawn, Red Dawn, her sister, I spoke with her a little while ago. Uh, they have not spoken yet, Red Fawn and Red Dawn today, uh, but Red Dawn is, is trying. Uh, I'm in communication with Red Dawn, so if any other updates come, uh, I will tell you. Uh, I'm going to do everything in my power to cover that uh, trial uh, next year. It uh, starts on January 29th in Fargo. Uh, and I think, yes, what you could do, keep her name and this case out there. Social media. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Call your local representatives. If you live in North Dakota, call Kevin Kramer. Call uh, Hovan, Senator Hovan. Call Senator Heidi Heitkamp, the Democrat, and ask them, why is this woman still in jail? And don't allow them to just say, well, I can't comment on a, you know ongoing criminal investigation. Well, if you're having an investigation, why, haven't, why hasn't the evidence been provided a year later? You know, one month is one thing. Two months is another thing. One year later, show us something. Uh, for videos on Red Fawn and videos on anything uh, Standing Rock related, you can go to youtube.com slash TYT politics. We have a playlist. Uh, I think it's Native Americans fight the Dakota Access Pipeline. I believe there's almost 300 videos on that. Uh, so I've been continuing to cover uh, anything that uh, falls in the aftermath of the No Dapple movement. Uh, and I will continue to cover uh, injustice wherever I see it. Have a good weekend. Thanks for watching.